What's up everybody? Welcome to Among the Fins. My name is Aaron Taylor. Check out the new album Memoria Viva by the band White Stones. I've actually never heard of this band before and I discovered them through a viewer request. So with that being said, I decided to go through their discography just to really hear what they're all about. And I gotta say what a treat it was. The band was formed by Martin Mendez, who is the bassist for Opeth out of his desire to create more death metal, an itch that wasn't being scratched in modern day Opeth. So in 2019, he started White Stones as a side project and he dropped a debut album in 2020 titled Crew to Who. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly or not, probably not, but it means son. The album showed just how serious he was about death metal and it had just a little hint of prog in there, but I feel like it didn't really venture too far away from groovy, heavy, mid-tempo rhythms and melodic overtones. Their second album, Dancing Into Oblivion, dives a little bit further into prog territory, which for me, I didn't enjoy it quite as much. I felt like it took away from the foundation of death metal that the debut album laid down before it. It's not to say that it's bad, but personally, for me, it was a little distracting. It made songs feel like they were twice as long as they really were. And diving into this new album, I had no idea what to expect or really where to start. So, of course, I started with the singles. The first one being La Iri, which means anger. This one has one of my favorite riffs on the entire album, mixed with a haunting guitar melody and with the growled Latin vocals. It just made the chorus sound so freaky sinister. While the verses were a little bit more relaxing, with some smooth guitar passages separated by heavily distorted kind of screeching guitar solos. This time around I feel like they were making their prog influences be more part of their charm than anything else. The second single they released, Degeneration, continues the riff oriented jam with the vocal growls that sort of reminded me of Rammstein. The melodies in the chorus are just so, so freaking beautiful and it's what kept me coming back for more. The first couple times I was listening to the song, I just had to go back, even halfway through the song, just so I could hear it one more time. And the bridge takes a really dark turn as it has a progression that feels like it's constantly speeding up and it goes right back to being joyful and it just makes you feel like everything is right in the world. The different atmospheres between these two songs made it really hard to tell what the rest of this album is going to hold even more so after hearing the kind of creepy opening track which is also the title track memoria viva it starts off fairly slow and reminds me a lot of black sabbath bloody sabbath at least until the guitar comes in which has a really fun groove then it fades out as it goes into humanoids which has more of a middle eastern vibe to it thanks to the guitar and the bass and the whisper vocals and intro is a really cool touch then it theatrically fades out and unexpectedly turns into kind of a groove metal jam. The lead guitar does give it a really eerie atmosphere as it's kind of, I don't know, the way it's mixed, it sounds like the two guitar parts are kind of fighting against each other. And the further you get into the song, the more it evolves. About halfway through, it seems like you reach the peak of the song with a really big drum buildup and just being shy, about two seconds shy of seven minutes long. It is one of the longer songs on this, but at the same time, because there's kind of separations throughout this song, it feels like you're actually listening to two songs. So it doesn't really feel like it's all that long. It kind of has like a little hint of dream theater to it within its songwriting, which I absolutely loved. And then we have the song Zamba de Uran, which is the first of three instrumentals off of this album. It's fairly gentle again and mostly bass driven and it makes it feel like you're going further down the road on this journey that the band is taking you on. And then around the two minute mark, a flute solo comes in, which makes things feel like they're becoming even more jazzy mixed in with the drums. Then we have the second instrumental off of this album, which is Somos, which follows the same kind of theme. This one is only about two minutes long and it's just a smooth bass line and soft drum. So I feel like it just flows through really quickly. Moving on to the longest track, on this record, Grito al Silencio. It has a very exuberant intro, followed by what I feel like is the most death metal verse on this album. The pounding drums and the growling vocals really demand your attention. Then it fades out and it brings the intro back around again. And after another verse, you get really colorful sounding guitar solo. It sounds, honestly, I think it's one of the best solos I've heard in a very long time. But also, I gotta admit, I kind of struggled with this song. I felt like it was just a little too progressive and at times almost felt a little too pretentious. I don't know, I just, I felt like 
the softer moments were just a little bit too much. It felt a little too theatrical. I felt like they were expecting too much attention out of the listener and not really giving a whole lot of payoff for them really sticking through those moments once it came back around again. And it, yeah, it just felt like kind of periphery in a sense where they're just flexing their progressive muscles and just making things as kind of weird and awkward as possible. But honestly, at most points, I felt more bored than anything throughout this song, especially with multiple listens. Luckily, things pick up quite a bit with the next track, Vincidoras Vincitas. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. Probably not. The riff is absolutely sick, and I feel like the drums got a chance to shine, and they really won me over, especially with the little mini drum solos that pop up here and there. The light-hearted atmosphere in this song was absolutely amazing. I loved it so much, and it just increases even more with a guitar solo, which I didn't think was going to be possible. And then we have the closing track, which is the third single on this album, Yamaya, which is the name of a water spirit. It uses the same melody from the song, What Child Is This?, which is a Christmas song. I thought that was kind of weird, but it definitely closes this album off in a very gentle, kind of melancholic way. I gotta say, their debut album is still probably my favorite. I did enjoy this album quite a bit. I feel like it did it better than the predecessor. I feel like it flowed a lot better in the progressive nature. While it didn't really keep me entertained on every song, I feel like I still enjoyed it on most songs. It made a lot of twists and turns really unexpected. You didn't really know what each song was going to bring. But one of the main issues I had with this album were the riffs. I feel like they didn't bring a whole lot of variety. They all felt very similar from song to song. But I feel like that helped the rest of the band to stand out quite a bit. Between the bass, the lead guitar, the drums, even the flute. I feel like they really all held their own and made each different section on this album stand out that much more. Also, I didn't really care that much for the instrumentals, but I feel like that's one of my more personal struggles, at least, I don't know, I, I'm not really much of an instrumental kind of person, and I felt like these were very, very much lacking and pretty weak, especially compared to some of the more upbeat moments on this album. And not only that, but some of the songs had their own, like, just dropouts and instrumentals built within them that I feel like weren't really that great either. So for the most part, any of these songs that had vocals thrown in there, I really enjoyed. And the parts where the vocals weren't coming through, um, I felt like it just wasn't doing it for me. So with all that said, I got to give Memoria Viva by White Stones a 6.8 out of 10. But I want to know what you guys think. I have a feeling that not a lot of people have heard of this band just like me. So if this sounds like something that would be up your alley, especially if you're a Opeth fan, especially an old school Opeth fan, definitely give this band a try and leave a comment below letting you know what you thought, what you would rate it, what your favorite song is. And also, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like. It helps out so much with YouTube's algorithm and it really helps keep my videos popping up on your recommended section on YouTube. And also, if you want to help support me further than that, feel free to subscribe and ring the bell icon. Doing any of these things helps me out tremendously and I just thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to listen to me talk about music and I hope you have a good rest of your day or night whenever you're happy to be watching this and I will talk to you guys next time.